Hello there, my beautiful pumpkins, and welcome back to the Pumpkin Patch. If you are new here, hello, my name is Chloe Taylor, and on this channel, I believe that we have one of the most cozy, vibey, autumnal corners of the internet. So if you like my style, you like the way that I read, and you want to be a part of this community, be sure to hit that subscribe button and become a member of the Pumpkin Patch. You get new videos every single week from me, and today I am so delighted, y'all. It is fall in July. And we've been talking about this, I swear, for the last like two and a half months. If you're new here, fall in July is something that we do, I would say most years. I don't know that we did it last year, but uh, fall in July is where obviously I already have a cozy autumnal corner of the internet, but fall in July is really stepping up those autumnal vibes. So as you'll see, we have a totally different tablescape going on today. Uh, we brought the fall leaves in, some lanterns, you know, where we got fall nails. I'm also wearing a really nice um, oversized black sweater and shameless self plug. This actually is my merch. I bought it in like the biggest size available and it's just like this big, cozy, oversized amazingness. So um, shameless self plug there, but I do have links to my merchandise store. If you want to twin with me, I'm wearing the Hermit color edition. I'll be sure to insert some photos so you can see what I'm talking about, but all that down below. In any case, today's reading is actually going to be a collective message. I do these periodically and I believe that if you stumbled across this video, there is something for you here. There's a message that you need to hear. It might come in the form of just one of the cards. It could be the entire reading from start to finish, but I am just feeling into what spirit wants to bring. And this could be a message that is for lots and lots and lots of you. It might be something that's just for a couple of you, but this is what spirit was calling me to bring to you today for the first day of fall in July. So that is the vibe. So I do have some cards set out. We're going to shuffle some more cards in, but we're just going to get started with these cards first. So um, if you want to take a moment, I'm not going to put meditation music into this video, but if you do want to take a moment to pause the video and just maybe set an intention for this reading, if there's an answer that you're seeking, if there's something that you're looking for, um, if you've come here just, you know, open and willing and with an open heart, I again believe you're already in the right place, but maybe take a moment to set an intention for this reading before we get in. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. So these first five cards that I've already shuffled out, these are meant to kind of be more like a pathway of starting here, finishing over here, and we're kind of going on a road together. So we're going to go ahead and start here, and we have Thanatos, or I think that's how you pronounce that. Thanatos is one of the, I feel like more broader cards of this deck in particular. Um, and it's kind of funny because it gives me like Thanos vibes, like the name is very similar. But this card is actually about death. And I do feel like at this point in time, if you're here, you might be experiencing a death of your own. This can be not a literal death, of course. I'm not talking about you specifically dying, but a metaphorical death of a kind is what Thanatos brings. And this is about grieving and mourning and bearing witness to all that is. Life is such a beautiful metaphor for death in and of itself as we have the beautiful times, but it is that death that brings us to our knees and sometimes can make the beautiful times even more beautiful. Now, of course, I don't think that we always need to be suffering in order to experience pleasure or joy or the beautiful moments of life, but sometimes suffering does allude to us appreciating more of what we have. And death, I feel like, very much creates that, you know, um, even if it ever was like, again, we're talking in metaphors, I'm just giving you an example here. But even if we were talking about an actual death, oftentimes the death of that person, you cherish the moments that you did have when they were here walking the earth with you. And it can lead us into almost this like richer insight into life because of that. So right now, I'm really getting 
the sense that you have been possibly in agony as you've been holding on to parts of yourself that really aren't serving the journey that you're on right now. They are holding you back and it's been painful to let them go because at one point in time, these were things that helped you. These were parts of yourself that kept you safe. Um, there are so many different ways to look at this as well in terms of like what part you might be let, letting go of. Um, I'm going to share a very specific story for myself. I will say right here, trigger warning, we're going to talk a little bit about eating disorders for just a moment. So if you don't want to hear about that, please just skip forward a few moments. But something that was a very like metaphorical death for me in the last couple of years was recovering from binge eating disorder for myself and something that I had to get to that was very, very hard because if any of you have ever struggled with binge eating disorder, you know how much shame comes along with that, how shameful you are of like overeating or overfilling yourself or you know, just the shame that comes from even doing that act in secrecy or just, oh, it's almost like punishing your body in a way. But something I had to come to realize is that in order to let that part of me go, obviously I worked with therapists, you know, I, I was very privileged to have help in that process. It wasn't just me thinking through it, but something I had to come to the realize of for myself on my own path is that the part of me that was consuming, consuming, consuming was something that at a time in my life where I was very, very, very emotionally distraught, um, I, I found food as a coping tool. And I continued to carry that for years, even after it didn't serve me anymore and it actually became more harmful. And the thing that actually helped me to set it free and to move on was actually learning to love that part of me and thank it for keeping me safe when I didn't know how to deal with the big emotions that were coming up, which that happened to me in my teenage years where I went from one extreme that was anorexia into binge eating disorder on the opposite end. And then I kind of stayed in that binge cycle for many, many years moving forward. And for me, I had to to let that go, to let that part of me kind of die off, I had to learn to love it and thank it for helping me during a time period where that was my coping tool. And granted, I'm not saying everybody's path with this sort of thing will look like that. But that was the story I was being called right now to share with you. And some of you might really resonate with that message. Some of you might be like, nope, that's not me. Don't deal with any of that. Um, that's really what I'm getting at when I'm talking about shedding layers of yourself. You have to almost learn to love the parts of yourself and to stop shaming and damning the parts of yourself that maybe need to be shed. And that can be a really hard thing if you're in a position where you don't have a loving and compassionate voice that can help you speak to those parts of yourself without hatred in order to let them go. And it can also be a period of mourning, letting those parts of you go. Sometimes the parts of us that are needing to be mourned internally are parts that were really beautiful at one point in our life. And now we've moved into a new way of being. So I feel like this is really more about a personal death that we are moving through a personal transformation. And it's all right. Something else that Spirit is giving me through this card as well is that um, there's definitely an inner piece of you that maybe it's a dream that you always wanted to see fulfilled. And this is not me telling you to give up on your dream. However, this is me saying that that dream might not be in alignment with you anymore. And there's an internal part of you that is holding onto that dream and is angry that you haven't fulfilled it. And Spirit is saying, you know, you need to mourn the part of you that wanted that dream and find ways to move forward into this new way of being, this new dream that you're having. But you can't do that. You can't just bypass all of the feelings that come up with moving on. So let's go ahead and see what else we got. So we also have Kairos. Oh my gosh, I love how the cards that we're getting, these to me are all like the really big, broad archetypal themes of this deck that just have a lot to them. So with 
Kairos or Kairos. I'm not exactly sure how to say this and I apologize if I'm butchering it. This is all about timing, mythic time, synchronicity, and learning about really how you can move in alignment and having ease over your life. And remember, this is the progression we're moving through. So if we're looking at this as the starting point, it might feel like total and utter destruction. Death feels like the most final note that we can ever imagine as humans. And ultimately, we're going through a figurative death, a figurative transformation, so that we can come more into alignment with ourselves. That's the purpose of this. And this card Kairos is or Kairos is all about mythic time and synchronicity and learning that the way that we have constructed time to work in society isn't necessarily the truth. Because gosh, I think the best example I have ever had of this card in my life was I went to a float spa last year in the autumn time. And if you've never been to one of those, I highly encourage it. If you feel like you are mentally in a place where you can do that and it will feel good, some people, it's not the right thing. Um, so I would encourage you to like do your research before just doing something like that. But a float spa is like basically this pod that is filled with like really, 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 really salty water. And so much so that you float like literally like the water literally makes you float on top of it. You can't. I don't even know how to explain that. Like trying to like put your leg into this water, it will just float to the surface. Um, it like the whatever they put in the water makes you float. And um, you can choose to close the pot or leave it open. For for me, I think I left it open for most of my float journey because it was, you know, it was, it was new. I was a little scared. Um, and you float for about an hour usually, and you can close your eyes. There's nice music. There's soft lighting in there. You can turn the lights off and just do like total darkness, um, but you do it by yourself. And I spent an hour in there. And when I tell you this hour, it felt like five hours easily. You don't realize how long an hour can really be when you are depriving all of your senses, when you're not really hearing much aside from maybe if you have the music or water sounds, you're not seeing anything. If you've turned all the lights off, you don't have your phone, you're not talking to anybody. It's this total and complete like silence. And for some people, like I said, that might sound very scary, but it's something that you don't realize how long an hour can really be. And the way that we think about time, we think an hour is so short, but when we're in this process of divine flow of really moving into alignment, an hour can feel like several hours. Have you ever been in the state of flow where you're creating or doing something that feels so good that it feels like hours and hours and hours have passed, but it's been 25 minutes? Because I can definitely say I've experienced that a lot in my life. So this is about moving into a place where time isn't even something that you make decisions with anymore. It's getting into such a state of alignment that flow happens organically. You don't have to go to a deprivation tank to get it or a float spa rather. Deprivation tank sounds so like brutal. That's why I think they also call them float spas. But I give that example because that's in my life where I've witnessed that the strongest. But you're moving into a place of more alignment. So trust these things that are being shed from you because it's happening for a good reason. So the next card or the heart of your reading, we have the self. Oh, this is going to make me cry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I actually really want to pull the, the book up on this card if y'all are okay with that. <laughs> um. I just feel like this card, it holds a lot of special significance to me as well as the, as the channeler here, but it, it's a card that some of the hardest parts of my own life, this card has surfaced and like just touched me in new and interesting ways. So, um, it's just a card that when I see it, it's just, it, it carries with it such a great message. So I'm actually feeling called to read it to you from the book. So we're going to do that. Um, the self. So this, remember, this is the heart of your reading. We have the soul, the witness, the watcher. The self is the prism that allows the spectrum of our personalities to radiate. 
It does not judge, prohibit, suppress, or oppress any of its parts, as it lovingly knows that all aspects have a time and a place and lead us to experience the full breadth, breadth, yeah, that is what that says, (laughs) of life's offerings. The self is the central abiding container, the awareness of the infinite universe of possibilities. When this card appears, it's a call to step back into witnessing consciousness, to observe yourself navigating the world. Ask yourself, am I the stew or am I the chef? In most situations, our ego draws us into the cauldron where we swirl, spin, and smolder in chaos. Yet the self is a graceful culinary dancer, watching, waiting, observing as the spectrum of ingredients become the flavor of life. Look in the mirror for 30 seconds or more. Attempt to see the you behind you. I just got the chills, y'all. This is all about becoming you and not the you that like, oh, I'm a mom. Oh, I'm a daughter, a sister, a brother, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, a boyfriend, a partner, you know, not that kind of you. The you that just is your essence. Who are you when you are just being, when it is just your essence at the table? Who are you then? That is like something to journal on if you haven't done that or consider mirror gazing, which is what this card suggests that you do. But all of this is in service of becoming yourself. So all of this that you've been dealing with, this to me, it seems like a shit storm if I'm being honest with you. It's bringing you back to your most essential version, to the version of yourself that is less about doing and more about being. Now, with the next card, we have the crone. Wow. The crone is also another card that I really enjoy. Um, This deck is just so great. I'll definitely link it down below for you. This card is all about the, basically the witch, the outcast um, old woman. But of course, even though these are archetypal cards, I don't want you to focus on gendering them. Um, the sage, somebody that's magic, clairvoyant, psychic, intuitive, really wise. Oftentimes, though, the crone is somebody that is outcast from society, at least in today's world. And they usually are the most wise, but they do things very differently. We see this a lot, I feel like, in today's world, where a lot of us are so much more aware than even our parents were or their parents' parents were. And I'm not saying that's all of you. There are some of you that are extremely, extremely wise and you are very old souls and you yourself are currently in that crone archetypal stage. But I feel like many of us, we all exhibit that crone energy, no matter how old you are, you have something wise to bring to the table, but you've been shaming that part of yourself because somebody else has been doing it first. Somebody else shamed you into silence, told you you weren't beautiful, magical, just as you were. I mean, gosh, sometimes I even think about how in society, we demonize our own bodies. We demonize our own bodies. We put shame on how we look. We tell women mostly in particular how to dress. We put all of these restrictions on our own personhood. And the crone steps through with almost this like vengeance and says, absolutely not. I'm here. I don't care what you think of me. This is who I am. You can take me or leave me. And I basically, the crone knows what she brings to the table and she's not scared to eat by herself. And I feel like this is ultimately the energy that you're stepping into as you're stepping more into yourself. You're not willing to be inauthentic. And that might make conversations with others difficult to have because you're not willing to shame yourself down anymore or stuff yourself down anymore. You are so much more open to being loud and heard and present. And honestly, I would argue that the crone is one of the most dangerously powerful archetypes in the in the entire deck. And it's because she, again, she knows what she brings to the table and she's not afraid to eat alone. 
So this is the energy that you're moving into now. This is like the next part of your, your stage as you are releasing, as you're getting into this alignment, coming home to yourself, you are, you're not afraid to speak up and say what you need to. And this might be something that you've been really afraid of in the past. So I'm really, I love it. I love seeing a crone. <laughs> then we have the shapeshifter and spirit is also calling me to read the card for this one out of the book, especially because while I was looking for the self card, I actually stopped and paused on this card. Um, I just noticed the imagery and I was like, oh, that one looks cool. And then of course it shows up in the reading. Isn't that the darndest thing? That's usually how it happens. Okay, the shape shifter, the trickster, the elusive, the formless. The shape shifter has a love of theater, games, and trickery. Its energy appears as one thing, only to reveal a more complex story below the surface. The shape shifter is within all of us to some degree. It is the side of ourselves that is slippery, non committal, and experimental, and longs to dismiss the rules. We need its energy to adapt to the ever changing landscape of our existence. When the shape shifter card appears, it's important to imagine imagine you are looking at life through a kaleidoscope rather than a single focus lens. At any moment, the scene may shift, revealing a more enchanting version than you imagined. Be weary, though, as the allure of the kaleidoscope can leave you exhausted and yearning for solid ground. Dancing long term with the shapeshifter requires a central pillar of integrity that links us back to our center. Vibrant, adaptive, humorous. So, what I'm really getting is you are coming into your sense of self, but it's going to ultimately lead you to questioning more and more and more of your reality, which is fine. You know, we love, we love a curious mind. Curious minds are fantastic. However, if you don't have a core center of self, of self-awareness, of knowing who you are, that can sometimes kind of lead you off into a path where you lose it, where you lose that sense of self, you lose your personhood because you're so caught up in all of the different answers and all of the different realities and all of the different ways of being. And I myself have experienced this. I am no, um, no stranger to the shapeshifter, but it's really important. That's why the self I think is at the center of your reading is it's really important for you to show up in alignment, be as loud and proud as you can be as authentic as possible, know who you are, but also to remember that sometimes within life, there is moments of tragedy, there is moments of death and rebirth. And there also are moments that are going to shake your very truth. And you have to decide what truths you want to carry forward. But all of it always leads back to the self. All of it always leads you back to yourself. Um, I always think about the metaphor of the spiral. If y'all have ever heard of that, um, gosh, I almost want to draw it for you. We do this a lot in readings, actually, where I'll kind of draw the example that I'm talking about. Um, let me just, I'll draw it for you really quick so we can, you can see kind of what I'm talking about here. But basically, a spiral, right? Let's say that this is your life, okay? And you at the center... This is you, like your most authentic being person is at the very center of the spiral. And you start out in life way out here. And as you journey through life, you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the center. But let's say that right here, you encounter a relationship problem, okay? And then you solve that and you keep going, you keep going, keep going. And then you get right back to that point in the spiral from before. And there's another relationship problem. It's brought right back to the surface. You're in that same setting. How do you respond? You learned something from the original issue. So you're going to respond a little differently, but you know, you're still learning about yourself. No issue. Right. But, but we're going to keep going. We solve that. And then it comes up again. <laughs> I feel like with the spiral, we often circle a lot of the same internal issues until we learn the lessons that we're meant to learn from them. And as we do that, we get closer and closer and closer to ourselves. So it doesn't mean that you'll never encounter the same problem over and over again. It means that every time you learn something new about yourself and you learn a new way of being and handling that issue. So I feel like when we're talking about coming closer and closer to the center and to ourselves, 
I just want to remind you because spirit is reminding me to tell you not to be so hard on yourself right now, especially if you are repeating an old pattern, an old lesson. Um, if you're needing to shed something that has continuously come up, come up for you, it's all right. Sometimes you need more tools in your toolbox before you can fully move past it, before it resurfaces and you don't even have to like think twice about how to deal with it. Now, I'm just going to pull a few cards from the Linda Fabry deck, and I think this is actually going to close the reading for us after that. I didn't anticipate this reading taking as long as it did. These cards are always like that, though. I should have known. But uh, we're going to pull a few cards just from the Linda Fabry deck, one of my personal favorites. Uh, of course, I'll link this one down below for you as well. But... Uh, this deck is just so, ugh, chef's kiss. Linda Fabry is out here doing incredible work. Love her work. Uh, she also does really beautiful, like, artwork, too. But I'm just going to pull about three of these for you, and then we're going to close out this reading. We have Remember. There is a guidance available at all times to help you navigate the realm of potential. The only decision you need to make is to open your mind and receive it. So if you're feeling lost, especially as we've been like reading through this reading, please remember that you literally have an infinite amount of spiritual, like your spiritual team. You have an infinite amount of, of finding like, navigating the realm of potential there is always like I don't want to say praying because not like there's also a lot of us that have a lot of like religious wounding and so praying can even be the wrong word but I feel like even just speaking to your highest self even just speaking to the universe to mother earth whatever that is for you and asking for help help always has the ability to show up if we're looking for it and you're being called to remember that, that every flower holds a message, every butterfly holds a message, every, every synchronicity that you're moved through is a callback for you to remember. Remember the, the essence of your being. We also have for you, nurtured by nature. Wellness is our natural state. We sometimes forget this and that's okay. Simply return to Gaia. Rest your soul upon the earth. Like a child resting safely in the bosom of the mother, she will remind you. So this is a call to get out into nature. If you can't actually physically go outside, you can always work with like a potted plant. That's a great way to do that. You can put on nature sounds. And I always encourage you to wear headphones if you're going to do nature sounds. I just think that they are a lot more useful when you have them like right in your ears, um, if that's something that you're able to do. But getting in touch with nature, because remember that you are part of nature, you are nature, you are part of the ecosystem. And without your significant piece, the ecosystem would not be the same. Mother, mother nature would not be the same. And you're being called to let mother nature hold you in whatever way sees fit for you. Because you'll always belong. You'll always belong in nature. Always. Even if you're not somebody that identifies as like a tree hugging hippie, you will always belong in a part of nature because we like the same thing that that makes up star stars. We literally have stardust in our blood. And even if we look at like the comparison of trees, like think about how um we have like trees with their roots. Don't those kind of look like our veins? <laughs> and if we think about the the rivers that run through this earth, don't those kind of look like veins? Like, I just feel like we have, there's, there's so much comparison between our own personal body ecosystems and the rest of the whole. And you're being asked to remember that, to remember that there's always going to be bills to pay, rent money to find, um, you know, days where we feel really great and days where we don't. But one thing that is always going to be consistent is that nurturing, loving Mother Earth that is always going to be there to hold you. You are always held. Unless gravity randomly decides to just not be a part of the planet, you are always held here. And there is so much safety in that. And then we have for you, illuminate the illusion, spread your wings, open your heart, embrace the wisdom of your disowned parts, discover your truth and divinity, not in the light, but in wholeness. 
Wow. I want to read that one more time. Illuminate the illusion, spread your wings and open your heart, embrace the wisdom of your disowned parts, discover your truth and divinity, not in the light, but in the wholeness. So this is a reminder that as we kind of talked about parts of yourself that you've kind of disowned, that you've disavowed, that, you know, even if we talk about like the crone archetype and being kind of shunned from society, the parts of us that we shun away from us, you're being asked to actually illuminate those. You're not meant to cure them, to fix them, to change them. You're meant to love them and show them that they're worthy of being here too. And that is the reading that I have for y'all. I hope you are having a fantastic start to July. Um, we're going to keep bringing the spooky, autumnal, Halloween, amazing vibes all month long. So I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button, continue to stick around. And I do want to remind those of y'all that are unaware, we do have a Patreon where um, I actually have just put out or it will be going out. If you're on the Patreon, you probably already have it. But um, if you see this video on YouTube, like it's already out on the Patreon Uh we do have the astrology predictions that are going to patrons this month. So if you want to see for your sun, moon and rising, what is going on in July, that video has just gone up there. And uh, we also have the weekly energy for this first week of July. If you want to know what's coming up collectively this first week, and we do those every single week on the Patreon. So if you want to be a part of a really cool community, please come over there, join us. Literally Patreon in my humble opinion is like such a fun place to be. We have so many great things, great community members. We get up to some fantastic community nights there, a book club, and so, so, so much more. I would love to have you. And uh, if you'd like to book a personalized reading with me, you can over on my uh, website, chloetaylor.com. That is the only place you can book a reading. I will never go out of my way to personally solicit anyone. If you ever see that on Instagram, on TikTok, any other social media platforms, sometimes even in my comments, you have scammers popping up. Up. Uh, I will never go out of my way to solicit you personally. You can only book through my website, chloetaylor.com. And uh, please follow me over on Instagram, on TikTok. I'm at Chloe Taylor. I am the only person that has the official handle at Chloe Taylor spelled exactly like that. No underscores, no extra letters. It is just at Chloe Taylor. And um, if you feel called to do so, it is never an expectation, but always appreciated. I do have my Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal listed down below for you where uh, you can leave me a tip if you feel called to do so. Again, I never expect it, but it's certainly always appreciated and I do pour it back into the channel unless you like leave me a comment and tell me to do something else with it. Uh, it always gets poured back in. And um, also, if you were unaware, I have my podcast, Divine Authenticity, which is available every single Tuesday. There there is a brand new episode. It goes up everywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Links for that down below. And please do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you again very, very soon. I love you so much, pumpkin. I'll see you then.